for being the winner. So good afternoon. Um, session two. Uh, first speaker is Dr. Shubir Majumdar. He was director of NIAB until recently and now he is a distinguished professor in Sam Institute and before that he was in National Institute of Technology then. He has vast experience in Because of short of time, I am cutting short of the introduction portion. Don't mind, Dr. Bajundar. Yes. So please start your session. Thank you, Dr. Sivaji and Dr. Asitosh Allar. And I thank Dr. Umapati, Dr. Suresh and the whole dignitaries uh, of SRBC for getting me here. Dr. Shivarandapa, Dr. Ramchandran, Dr. Michael and the uh, biggest guru uh, and uh, our sir. <laughs> Uh, and I, I don't know, I received uh, the gold medal in 2012, whether it was first or second and uh, before uh, I will take one minute, I can afford taking one minute. Before uh, one month by chance, my wife went to a gold jewelry shop and I asked her to polish it because sir ka naam dikhe nahi raha hai. So, I polished it and I plan to frame it because your certificate is framed in a big way in my office. So, I want to frame this now and keep. So, thank you and thank you for keeping faith in me, belief in me and I have grown very well. You all have actually seen me as a budding scientist, all of you. Sir? Yes. And you gave us, gave, kept so much of faith in me and today I hold very many good places and really serving to the nation for sake of animal science. Thank you so much for belief, keeping faith in me and watching me ahead of time. That's why I'm always grateful to the whole team. And whatever Dr. Ramchandran said, I was planned from my home to tell, but he took care of it. Most sincere society, very neat and clean, very clear, very straightforward, no hodgepodge. And this is all the great teaching of the big people whom you have been groomed under. And we are grateful to the society, may this grow as much as it can grow. So I will try to finish in 20 minutes. Another five minutes can be kept for interaction and I have lost one and a half minutes, I realize that. So this is a work where I will be talking about avenues including functional genomics of transcription factors and microRNAs to divulge the causes of idiopathic male infertility. Earlier I used to work with lot of proteins, you might have heard me talking about proteins. But now we have gone into this little advanced world because now you can talk about microRNAs, you can talk about trans fact, transcription factors and uh, swath analysis, MSMS and all these things. With the grace of God, I had wonderful students, much more competitive than me and they have added to my uh, brightness and I am grateful to all of them. So, we all know that the infertility was coming down and one of my students while walking in JNU said, sir, this looks very dangerous. If this is a fall of sperm count decline in the world, which was in 1990 and if it keeps on going like this, one day will come when you will cross the line of oligozoospermia which is orange line and we will have a dangerous situation, sorry. And we will have a dangerous situation and the whole uh, system will collapse. And we kept that in mind that this fall is really unilateral and in one direction. And uh, you can see that uh, so many things are talked in Melbourne infertility this morning, I won't talk that. But the sperm count has fallen from 170 to less than 60 million in one of the reports and in another reports from 110 to 60 million. And uh, these reports are really, really uh, tension uh, creating. There are a lot of causes, professional hazards, environmental assaults and other things like alcohol and smoking, everything. But real worry is the scale of problem was first recognized in 1991 where a Danish study found that there is a sperm count is going down in western men and it has gone into about half in 50 years. Almost 20 years later, scientists are still trying to explain it. So, when a person goes to hospital, the doctor either gives LH, FSH, testosterone, if the leddig cell is bad or gives combination of things and nowadays GnRH analogs, even then half of the men do not respond and do not produce any sperm. So, only endocrine system support is not enough. Cell has its own brain and cell works 
and or they, at its own space. So, it is important to learn and study cells. So, can we repair the defect? Yes, if we know the machinery very well, it is not too late to understand that. And where do we focus? I will again give you that that was 1990 and now this is up to 2009 data. The trend of various countries of sperm count fall has remained same. So, what we were talking while walking is not wrong, it is happening to be correct. These are the names of various countries. So, it is a matter of issue. And uh, there is an urgent need for better understanding the status of the male reproductive health, especially in the industrialized countries where the lifestyle and environmental factors may have a negative impact. Research is initiated to divulge factors causing idiopathic male infertility. However, knowledge about how does the infertility manifest in men uh, because of these factors is very, very meager. So, we may know about factor, but we have to prove that the factors are really, really important. So, as I said that we can study in a better way Leydig cells, Sertoli cell or germ cells in addition to what we do today that is whacking in hormones when we go to clinic and understand the business. So, we know the testes, I will not waste time and this is the Sertoli cell. All of us know that Sertoli cell has receptors for LH, uh, sorry FSH and testosterone and they will make goodies for the germ cells to make them sperm. Outside blood bond factors cannot come inside the testes. So, this is the mother nursing cell and it is responsible for feeding the germ cell baby at various aspects of the development and allows not only holds, but allows it to become sperm. So, any defect in this mother cell or nursing cell can cause you infertility and doctors cannot treat you when you go to the hospital. So, you have to understand what happens actually during infancy either in rat or in monkey or in human, the hormones are high, but testes does not respond to hormones. In puberty, Again hormones become high, but at this time testes has become smarter and respond to hormone and make a sperm. During juvenile phase in man and monkey, but not in mice or rat, there is a retracted decline in the hormones and there is a juvenile quiescence. But in puberty, some of them are infertile because their testes does not respond to hormonal response as it happens during infancy. So, technically speaking, infancy is the best model for, for infertility where hormones are there but spermogenesis does not occur. So, this is the response of the testis is not there. So, what we do that if we culture the subtly cells from either infant monkey and compare that with pubertal monkey or infant rat or mice and compare that with pubertal whatever is the relationship or transcription factors proteins we have done DNA microarrays whatever differential expressions are happening in a good testis and a bad testis under influence of normal hormone they can be studied and those factors can be taken out. So, we cultured certainly cell and our focus is only on certainly cell from such testes and comparative uh, genomics, proteomics and transcriptomics in both the areas. And then because we are expert of making transgenic mice, we not only stopped our study there, we generated transgenic mice where we knocked down or overexpressed these genes and shown can we make an adult infertile by manipulating that particular gene. If I can, then I prove that this particular factor is responsible for infertility. So, we have really published lot of uh, work in general of clinical endocrinology and metabolism, endocrinology and microgenome physiology, andrology, etcetera, many of them. And then gradually we have come to a conclusion that what happens, these are the Sertoli cells and we know that hormones act on Sertoli cells and uh, I understand Sir will say thyroid also acts, yes sir, thyroid also acts on Sertoli cell. And then you will find that lot of goodies are produced because these genes are stimulated by the hormones and these mRNAs are produced and these mRNAs will go and make good factors. This is the adult Sertoli cell and this is the infant Sertoli cell. So, infant Sertoli cell does not necessarily respond, adult Sertoli cell does respond. So, now that factor will help the germ cell to become a sperm. Now, let us come to a defective Sertoli cell. What if the Sertoli cell is defective? and some of the genes are not working. So, you will find that either mRNAs will not be produced and at least here I can show you two of the mRNAs not going to germ cell and then you will find there is a defective germ cell uh, advancement and there will be impaired spermatogenesis. This is a hypothesis based on that we have done differential uh, genomics, transcriptomics and proteomics and found many genes and worked on them. 
So, we know that adult is in response to FSH making goodies which is helping germ cell to make sperm, infant is failing to do that and that is why uh, infant is infertile. So, we have done this is the differential display like that we have done DNA microarray and several such comparative analysis are duplicates of infant, duplicates of pubertal. So, some of them are over expressed in infancy not in puberty, some of the genes are over expressed in puberty not in infancy. So, what we have done? Actually, we generated transgenic mice where in puberty we overexpress such genes and made them infertile like infant or in infancy we have overexpressed pubertal genes and make them super activated. Today, I will be speaking about certain genes which were high, which were low in puberty and if we express what happens there and some of the genes which are high in puberty, if we suppress what happens, can we induce infertility in puberty by bringing them into state of an infancy gene expression. So, I will not show these are all DNA microarray data and their proof of principle and then since with the grace of God we discovered a technique called as testicular transgenesis which is less cumbersome method to generate transgenic animals. So, we could generate several transgenic animals judged by gene integration in testes and SHRNA for inhibiting a gene worked fantastically with these techniques. We are thankful to God this we published in nature methods earlier and using this technique we have inserted the genes having a cassette which either overexpress or show gives an SHRNA for inhibiting uh, the action of mRNA into the cell. So, this is just the basic background we generated transgenic mice like that and I will talk about one of the proteins called as Dikov K3 protein which we found to be more in pubertal situations. So, we generated an SHRNA cassette and generated a transgenic mice and this was an in vivo work and we knocked down Dikov K3 in vivo that is during puberty what we found that we successfully knocked down mRNA of that protein DKK3. You can see the western blot, you can see the staining also. Upon that, I will just give you gist that these mice were infertile. So, in puberty animal, in pubertal animal by knocking down a gene, we have made them infertile. That means, because of environment, nature, habits, behavior, alcohol, cigarette, if this gene of this particular protein is affected or mutated or whatever, that man is infertile because of that. Doctor does not matter how much LH, FSH, testosterone or any GNRH is giving, it is not going to help. You have to study this, understand this and evaluate and analyze whether this particular gene is affected in that male or not, otherwise you cannot. So, like that see the infertility has been clearly uh, discernible in such kind of animals. Other factor was Wnt3. So, I will show you number of factors to prove what I am telling is right, it is not by chance. So, other was Wnt3 and Wnt3 we found that it is more in uh, pubertal sertoli cells as compared to infant sertoli cells. The mouse and monkey uh, real time PCR data also showed the same, it is more. So, our job is to inhibit them and bring them to the level of infant and show that like infant they do not produce proper sperm. And we did that, we generated a, a transgenic animal and where Wnt3 was inhibited during adulthood. And you see Wnt3 was really inhibited, we can see the western blot it is inhibited and I will not go into the other details, but what I will show you that the blood test is barrier which was good in control animals was completely broken in the Wnt3 down regulated animal and this is connexin 43, you can see this is gone. So, as soon as connexin 43 goes, certainly certainly cell barrier goes away, blood borne materials will go inside and destroy the advancing germ cell. And as the connexin 43 was very low in the all transgenic animals as compared to control, we found that the sperm count as well as litter size both declined significantly. This is F1 generation, if you made them and made more and more generation probably you will get the incomplete infertility. After this, I will try to explain that how this works. This is the Wnt3 which is the ligand. If I have knocked out or knocked down Wnt3 our animals, the whole complex will go and bind to beta catenin. Those of you know, it will get phosphorylated and destroyed. So, now beta catenin cannot get inside the cell to produce goodies including connexin 43 and that results into destruction or less production of these things and that is how certainly cell is compromised and have a decreased sperm count etcetera. Now, uh, I will go and show you that how the same thing DNA microarray we have used to understand what the transcription factors are doing. So, transcription factors are also protein. So, we have done the transfect analysis. So, there is a database of uh, transcription factors. We have used that database and we have taken 2 kb across the TSS of the E gene which is either in microarray analysis down regulated during puberty for example or up regulated during puberty. So, from transfect database we have seen 
that in those promoters of these genes which are up or down regulated, what are the number of transcription factor binding sites? And those transcription factors which are binding to these, we have taken certain control promoters which are nothing to do with this experiment and found how many transcription factor binding sites are there on the 2KB across their TSS. And this is a study which gives you at the end of the day that what is the list of highly abundant transcription factor binding sites on down regulated genes. So, you have knowledge about those transcription factors and same way up regulated genes. So, then what we do is basically the student Kamal Mandal who is in USA now, he said sir uh, even from thousands we have come to 30, 35 transcription factors out of let us say 1000 uh, proteins. And now I will go into nucleus and cytoplasmic fraction because if a transcription factor is sitting in cytoplasm, it is of no use to me. I will pick up those which are in the nucleus because they are act active. So, then we have done trypsin digestion and, and really carried out SWAT analysis uh, in collaboration with uh, uh, Seattle uh, Center for Proteomics and uh, found I am showing you work of two. One is yin yang transcription factor and it is definitely present in the pubertal surtley cell. So, we knock down yin yang in rat and make a transgenic rat. As soon as you knock down the levels go down and in, in fact this is luciferase knockdown control rat that means there is a transgenic rat with luciferase knockdown nothing will happen there. So, level of a, uh, AMH is low, but as soon as yin yang knockdown animal is there the AMH goes up. So, AMH ideally should be up during infancy because what happens during infancy the AMH is very high and it is a childlike situation because it is only cell dividing not differentiating. And similarly, GDNF which is a germ cell division marker went down. So, that means an adult has become like an infant. This was a sign, but actually when we went into the testes, testes look very bad and his sperm count declined in F1 generation by this much. That is what we are seeing in world. Sperm has not become 0, it has declined and that is what we are trying to uh, find out that what are the factors which do this. Now, we the, the, the journal wanted us to show how many fold changes in the gene expression has occurred upon your transgenesis to prove you did right transgenesis. So, we had to do this, uh, this heat map and we found there are really 64 genes are changed because of the transgenesis. So, really the work was biologically correct. We published that in DNA research and similarly we found another one called as ROR alpha results are same. And we are very happy that we published that paper also showing this is the condition of the testes by manhandling one of the transcription factors. That means, if these transcription factors are touched upon by any kind of situation in life, food, disease, COVID-19, heat, temperature, alcohol, toxicity, you can go there and no hormone will help, but we have to find out and dig out what are those factors. So, one by one we need to do this and this we published in Gene and I will tell you in uh, another uh, 3 minutes if I finish is okay, 3 to 4 minutes. So, then I will talk about the hippocampal uh, hippo pathway and what happens this is very very important hippo pathway for renewal, proliferation, differentiation, death and growth and development organ size and we all of us know is a very very important issue and no one studied in testes. We thought that germ cells are proliferating like cancer cells and YAP is really has a very big role in uh, cancer. Then why not to understand that? And we studied in certainly cell that do they make YAP, do they have functions of YAP which will be interacting with the germ cells in any manner. So, vertiporphin is anti YAP. So, vertiporphin binds to YAP and inactivates by changing its conformation. So, what we have done basically that in a cell culture of certainly cell, we have added vertiporphin. If you add vertiporphin, YAP will be inactivated. So, when you add phoscholine in a certainly cell culture, cyclic MP will go up as all of us know. And this will relative mRNA expression of the spermatogenically impact important stem cell factor. This is uh, GZA, G, sorry GJA, which is connects in 43 and uh, inhibin beta B, all are important for spermatogenesis. So, you see they all go up upon cyclic MP rise because of phoscholine treatment of certainly cell. But as soon as you add vertiporphin, they are brought down. That means, cyclic MP regulated expression of the genes important for spermatogenesis upon FSH addition have been brought down if the YAP is manhandled by adding vertiporphin. So, we understood for the first time that yes associated, associated protein have big role. So, this is how the system works cyclic PK will go and will activate it uh, PK will go inside and crave will be phosphorylated and we think YAP works in cytoplasm as well as the nucleus. And if we inhibit YAP by vertiporphin, we found that we really stopped the 
all the goodies production by this particular uh, cell and we also discovered that yap somehow has some role on regulation of the pk activation so when you inhibit yap the pk activation goes up crep phosphorylation also been shown to be going up but crep will not work unless yap is attached to it so vortiporfin is not providing yap to interact and that is why this uh, uh, this production of the mrnas etc have gone down so next slide we show that when you add uh, h89 which is actually going to act on uh, pka so in presence of vortiporfin pk activity is going on because phosphocrep is going on that is assumed like that but if you add h89 you find that this is completely inhibited so this work is done and then we have done a microrna work similarly we dug out a microrna another one minute and this is mir 382p which is inhibited during puberty so we overexpressed mir 32p during puberty and shown that we bring in infertile like situation and this is the transgenic mice made like this and when we overexpressed mir 32 we found the testes goes down and several genes they go down and also most importantly sperm count goes down and eventually the animals become infertile so this is a, a microrna and this is a wonderful work this is published in molecular therapy and nucleic acids last year and similarly other work was done using a, a microrna called as 92a3p and 92a3p is what fsh does is stimulates the sertoli cell to become adult but 92a3p is high during infancy and it creeps every genes important under check so if i can overexpress 92a3p in an adult animal like infancy my adult animal or adult sertoli cell should become like an infant sertoli cell and we generated this mice and we found everything is inhibited sertoli cell is small and we see infertility in this animal also litter size goes down and this was also published in a very good journal called a cellular and molecular life sciences this year so i have given impact factor of last two papers as 10 not because i want to boast myself that you can get from uh, internet also but our science is not bad if you do good science if you do organized science if you go up to end of it and prove it is good this particular field of science is going to see the light of the day and we can compete with everybody else in the field of cancer tuberculosis anything so my advice keep working very hard you can touch very big big heights thank you very much thank you shurda um because of we are running behind time only one question will be allowed dr gupta please ये सर को सोनाटेड So, the, so as soon as puberty occurs they have got a they have got a transmembrane localization signal added so that it is same the signal transaction there is a defect That's yes sir yes sir it is the membrane co localization is a defect how much pen 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 silence this uh, mirnas or stuff any scenario of the alteration of the gonadotropin releasing hormone or the gonadotropin yeah i have shown most important is testosterone but because of lack of time there was like this there is a slide testosterone level does not go out and no, by chance the amh will be most by chance dr 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 asutosh alda did the testosterone assay okay. for those animals so it was done by third party actually okay okay thank you <laughs> we did androgenesis free of cost thank you Thank you, sir. <laughs> so I will do free of cost making animals for you. Give me. Thank you. <laughs> As a token of gratitude and honor, I now request Professor Asutosh Haldas kindly come forward to present memento to Professor S. Subir Majumdar.
Thank you very much, sir, for doing the honor. So moving on, our next speaker is Dr. Pradeep Kumar, a friend whom I have known for several years from the Rajiv Gandhi Center of Biotechnology. He's a life member of the Kerala Academy of Sciences and is a recipient of the National Bioscience Award for Career Development. 